Hi everyone, welcome to another installment of Gian's story. In the last video, we ended off sharing about Gian's experience with animal communication and we also went over some of the comments that people placed who watched his videos and had similar experiences. So now, Gian is... Gian, how old were you? Uh, there I was six, seven, eight. Okay, six, seven, seven, eight. eight lived in a quiet town, he had lots of time for himself to just explore and be with animals. But then comes the inevitable human socialization experiment when children go to school. And yeah. that's where we're going to start today. Yeah, so basically, as you know, uh, young age, communicate with animals, play with animals, play outside, mostly naked or in my underwear, in the bush, <laughs> with the trees and the fruit trees and all of that. And I know I, I went to a kindergarten in my town where there was, you know, lots of kids for the whole day and then you'll go home. Now, with this, also what happened is you have events taking place where everyone wants everyone to socialize. So the teachers are very much focused on socializing. The kids must talk, must play, you have playtime and you're learning. Now, luckily for me, this was still happening in my town where, you know, it's only there in school that I had this social experiment going on. And when I go home, it's quiet. I'm by myself with the fields around me, the bush, the big garden. But there's a few instances in kindergarten. For example, I've lately seen on uh, Facebook people posting about Netflix and this cuties, which is sexualization of children. But you know, even without Netflix and without any influence from the media, we always had the influence from the adults around us. We always had the influence of our parents. Because you see your parents kissing, you see your parents hugging. You probably walked into your parents while they were uh, intimate with each other. You know, these things happen. And without needing TV, without needing any other influence and I bring this up because I'm from the 90s we didn't have phones we didn't have everything you have today and computers was more scarce especially in South Africa TV you had your TV yeah sure but we didn't watch TV all the time it's like you know what you're gonna watch and you watch it like Star Trek or uh, something uh, sliders you know all TV shows but sexualization comes also just from environment you see your parents kissing, you see your uncle and aunt kissing, you see teenagers making out. You know, these things used to be in our environment. And when I was six years old, a seven-year-old girl came to me and she said, Hey, Gian, do you want to kiss? And my friend was standing next to me and he was like, Yeah, yeah, I also want to kiss. And I said, Okay, yeah, sure. What, what is this? And she said, Okay, the adults cannot know that we're going to kiss. So she took me and my friend behind the dollhouse. You know a dollhouse where kids play in? And we stood there in a line, like very like systematically, like standing in a line. And she says, okay, I'm going to start with you. So she gave my friend a kiss, like a... And it wasn't like any mouth. It was just like putting lips together and doing a weird movement. And then she came to me and she gave me my first kiss, right? Now I'm six years old. I lost my... Kiss virginity, if you want to call it that. <laughs> and then after primary school, another instance happened where I went to grade one, which is where I was seven years old. And there was this specific girl. She came to me one day and she stood in front of me, all assertive, and she just said, Gian, you are my boyfriend and I'm your girlfriend. Because this is what people do. And I stood in front of her and I looked and I said, okay. And just because of saying okay, not saying yes or understanding this, we were now boyfriend and girlfriend. And she would write love letters and she'll write little letters to me and she'll put it in my bag or she'll give it to me. And I remember many times she'll come to me and say, Gian, we have to talk and I have to follow her. So I will follow her and she'll go to the bathrooms and she'll dare just talk to me and there she'll meet her friends, which is like two, three other friends. And it was like... <laughs> weird things like she's saying we're peeing and you can't see our private parts you know she'll say things like that and i was standing there like okay i'm gonna go play with my friends like what are you guys doing this is stupid 
And I actually have a very interesting uh, experience because I never shared this. It actually just comes up. Uh, one day I was standing by the bathroom with this girlfriend and she wanted to also kiss. So she got her friends to grab my arms and hold me still to kiss me. Now we're seven years old and I didn't understand what was happening but she didn't get to kiss me because I started fighting and wrestling them off. You know you can see where the mentality already goes because these girls were trying to play out something something they see from somewhere it can be how their parents are talking at home it can be what their parents are doing at home it can be what your uncle aunt is doing it can be the direct influence in your reality influencing you and because i didn't have that i had a very quiet home my dad was working till eight at nights my mom also started getting a job and she was also away sometimes late and we had to stay at school late so my influence is mainly, mainly kids and then home alone or home with my grandparents at some point. And with this, you have these weird experiences where kids try and play out what they see around them. And when you put kids together, it's a big social experiment because you basically have kids trying to imitate and be their parents, be what they have seen in their living environment, what they see from the authorities in their environment. And because of my different uh, upbringing, I didn't have that much of that. I had animals. I had nature. And it's like this imposing system just tries to suck you dry, to socialize, to, to be in this experiment of relationships. And it doesn't matter if you're six, seven, eight, nine, you're going to try and play it out. And it comes out sexual because you first want to kiss, you want to hug, you want to have a boyfriend, girlfriend. And then you play games like, a husband and wife and then the girl who you're playing with is seven and she's pretending to be pregnant and she's playing with dolls and babies I mean that's all Im implicit of sex it's nothing else it's already in the environment now with this when I change schools uh, wait let's stop Leila you have any questions on that part that I've shared no no, yeah. all right. So anyway, I found out about this girlfriend again when I was 13 because my mom saved every love letter and all of that. But I've already forgotten about it because I was young and life moved on. And when I got these love letters that my mom showed me when I was 13, I remembered everything. I was like, holy shit, all of that happened. But an instance for me is that when I was nine years old, I had a massive attraction well, actually, let me reverse. When I was seven years old, in grade one, there was a girl, and she was 13, and she called me her boyfriend. So every day at school in break time, I'll run to this girl, you know, after my other girlfriend, <laughs> and I'll go say hi to her, just like two minutes, which meant jumping on her lap, sitting on her lap, and feeling her breasts against my head, which I essentially did. And she loved it as well. So she would push my head against her breasts. <laughs> and it was this weird time as a kid, not understanding what you're doing, but you're doing it and you are enjoying it. And at some points you're not enjoying it. And you're playing things out that you're not understanding, but you're doing it regardless. So this girl who was 13 and I was at that time seven, we had this weird relationship and she told me at the end of the year that, look, I'm going to be going to a different school, so I'm not going to be seeing you anymore. And I felt so heartbroken that I'm not going to see her. But then I also found out that I was going to go to a new school. So from, from animal communication and being with nature, I went into this whole love relationship, sexualized uh, system experiment in school where it was about who's cool who's not who's got boyfriends who's got girlfriends who, who's got friends who's got no friends who's a loser who's you know it became this whole different reality <laughs> and from animals was very simple very direct it was like there's nature direct animal communication with humans the communication was on so many other levels 
It was manipulation, deception, it was attraction, it was words, it was how you looked. Do you look cool? Were you given the right genes? Were you given the right nose by your parents, the right eyes? You know, there was so much going on. And I also remember when I was seven years old, uh, there was bullying taking place. And my brother, my older brother, actually got in two fights with uh, these two bullies that kept teasing me and pushing me and you know wanting to fight me just because I was younger and sometimes I would stay at school uh, for a longer period of time all alone with my brother and then they would come and pick on me. So bullying started taking place. People that are bored, that want to establish themselves in the social experiment, start taking it out on, other, on others. And again, it's something most probably that they saw from home. They learned from home. Before TV was as big and the internet was as big and everything was so available as today, it still took place. Because what you have to realize is Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, the internet is an outer manifestation of what already existed in us. It doesn't come from anywhere new. It's now just being exposed. And that's great that it's being exposed, but it's taken place long before they existed. It just happened more secretly, more unknown, more in the dark. Because when I got bullied, when I had to kiss, when I had a girlfriend, when I was hugging and pressing my face against this 13 year old girl's breasts, all of that had to happen in secret. It was already there. So now today, TV, the internet is exposing that, it's showing that, that it's always been here. It's nothing new. And we're now just reacting more because we can see it and we're being honest about it. So for me, school was actually a very big social experiment because of my animal communication, I could see the difference. I could feel the difference. It was very traumatizing to a degree. I lost my connection with myself. And I had to go into this system thing so that I cannot get bullied, so I can get girlfriends, so I can be cool and not uncool. And so many things took place where I had to change myself. I had to give up animals. I had to give up nature to survive in this system. Otherwise, I'll just get beaten down. And nature didn't do that. Nature didn't beat me down. Nature didn't destroy and kill me. It was actually slowly but surely happening in the system. And I had a very great cross-reference with that. And uh, I didn't know how to process everything at that time. It was just very emotional. It was just very uh, pressing on me. And with that, I became actually very emotional. So I'll look tough, I'll feel tough. But as soon as something triggered me in the wrong way, I'll just cry. I'll just burst out and cry. Because I knew that this was not the world I wanted. I wanted the world of the animals, of nature. But I've already by the time I was eight, nine years old, disconnected myself completely from nature. And I went into the system world, especially when I changed schools to a new school, which was in the city, which was even further away from this quiet little town. Any questions? Well, I was just looking at my own experience of when I started getting caught up in like the whole social thing and social status and who's friends with who and who's boyfriend and girlfriend and and um it's like as a kid you, you kind of start to realize that there's like stuff's not right with this world and the things that matter to you like animals and nature seem to not matter to other people and when you project that into your own future and just the future of the earth it's like where where is this going yeah you know and it's like it doesn't make sense and then the point that keeps getting pushed in your face is that point of relationships and love. And it's like, oh, well, there must be something there that everyone is so tunnel visioned onto this love point. It's like, I must be missing something that I'm into animals and nature yeah. and other stuff. So let me let me find out what this is all about. Yeah, Yeah, because it's like you're into animals and nature. But then everyone else is focused on this one thing and you're like, okay, what is there? There must be something. Why is everyone focused on it that much? Yeah, because there must be a reason that everything else is being ignored, right? Like, yeah. And then, sad. And then when I went to the new school, when I was eight years old, an uh, interesting point was as well that uh, in South Africa, hunting is very big. 
And when I was in this new school, what I heard a lot from my friends, and they were eight years old, you know, eight, nine years old. And they would come back from weekends and their weekend, because you know, in, in grade two, grade one and two, you have to write down what you did the weekend, you know, like learn to write. So you write about your weekend. And most of the boys would write that they went hunting. So here my relationship also was like, okay, so the relationship more of people to animals should be that of killing. It should be for sport, for the trophy, for hunting. Because that's the stories my friends would come and tell. And with that, I felt so split, so broken, because my relationship was w playing with animals, you know, taking care of them, having fun with them. And here it seemed so cool to go out and hunt and kill animals versus living with them. And I had to kind of uh, change myself even more there to fit in and not look uncool, because now in this social experiment called school, if I didn't stand by my point, which I did try many times and I got bullied for it and laughed at, that's what happens. You you get kicked out of the system and you don't survive in the system. And if you don't have friends, if you're not cool and all of that, you're going to have a quite a hard life, quite a hard time in school. So that did happen to me uh, because I would cry, for example, when I was eight in my new school, the teacher killed a bee in the classroom and I started crying <laughs> and this actually led to uh, kids bullying me because I'm, I seem so sensitive uh, that the, the teacher actually killed a beep and for me the first point was let's just take it out and with that I started crying that you killed a bee and I had three kids after uh, the class confront me and laughing at me for crying and they started pushing me down on the floor, ripping my bag off my back. And they started dragging me on the floor and not allowing me to go home. They just wanted to keep me there down the stairs. But then I had a friend seeing this and he told them to stop and they listened to him. And then I realized at that point that you have more power to do things, to change things by being cool than being strong. And I have a whole story on how I became super cool and got a lot of strength with that where I was able to start affecting change already in my childhood years thanks to that one friend showing me there is a way. And I'll continue with that in the next video. All right. Thank you for sharing, Guillaume.